But though when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. So Jesus is talking about the secret prayer life. It is good to pray on Zoom. It is good to pray on WhatsApp. It's good to pray as a group. It's, it is good to pray in the church. But it is very important to pray individually, personally. A mantle that was wrapped. A prayer life in a private place. So when you are facing the river of Jordan, use the word of God, have the word of God, carry the word of God. And the second thing you have to do is you must have a personal prayer life. Today, I wanted to talk on a specific topic, how to face Jordan River in your life. We see five people faced Jordan River in their life, and we're going to learn five spiritual lessons from these five incidents. I wanted to compare this Jordan River as the afflictions and the problems and the sufferings that we face in our spiritual life. And the Bible says in Romans 2, 9, there will be affliction and distress on everyone who does evil, on the Jew first and also the Greek. So the Bible says we will have affliction when we disobey God, when we do evil. So when we are going through afflictions, when we are going through sufferings, when we are going through troubles, it is a time for us to examine why are we facing this situation. Is it because we are not following the Word of God or is it because we are following the Word of God? So we will face these challenges in our spiritual life when we disobey God and at the same time when we obey God. The ultimate purpose of these things in our lives is you know, that we should get closer to God. So I wanted to uh, read John 16, 33, where Jesus himself told, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace, you will have suffering in this world, be courageous, I have conquered the world. So Jesus told, we will be suffer in this world and we will have afflictions in our spiritual life. So the purpose is that as we go through the, those situations, we will get closer to God. So let me first bring uh, the first incident where, you know, people has to cross the Jordan River. Joshua chapter 3 verse 13. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that came down from above, and they shall stand up upon and heap. Here we see the priests that carried, and the people of Israel, along with Joshua, they faced the river Jordan. But when these priests and the people of Israel faced the river of Jordan. You know, God made a way for them to go through the Jordan. Do you know when God made the way? The Bible says the priests that carried the ark of the Lord, when their feet touched the water of Jordan, then that river was departed as two, and they was made a land where this people of Israel can pass the Jordan River. I wanted to compare this Ark of the Lord in the New Testament with the Word of God. And we need the Word of God in our spiritual life to go through our problems. You know, we need the Word of God to deal in our sufferings. We need the Word of God in our lives because when we are afflicted, that 
this word of God gives us comfort. King David said in Psalm 119.50, For your word is quickened me, so I was comforted in my affliction. So we need this word of God. And when those priests carried the word of God, that's when the Jordan River was divided. Yes, there is solution for your problems. Yes, there is solution for your sufferings. Yes, there is solution for your afflictions. We get solution from this Word of God. Because this Word of God is active and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what the Word of God says in Hebrews 4.12. And this Word of God gives comfort in our afflictions. That's what Psalms 119.50 says. And in 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17 says, All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for our spiritual growth. So we need this Word of God. And the question I wanted to ask this morning is, are we carrying the Word of God? Do we have the Word of God? Now God has given His Word so that we can carry in our hearts and in our minds. So when we have this Word of God, and when our feet steps into the water of Zodan, like troubles and sufferings and afflictions and whatever you are going through, God will make a way in that situation. I want to encourage you to keep God's Word in your hearts. By the grace of God, I got saved at the age of 11, and I had plenty of time, so I started memorizing the Word of God. And recently, I completed memorizing the whole book of Revelation. And I don't do it to show off that I memorized these things. The reason I memorized the Word of God, I figured out through the Word of God only, I can spend more time with God. And that practice has helped me to write couple of books, one is on prayer and another one is on worship. You know, praying according to the Word of God and worshiping according to the Word of God. Those books are at the back of the table, so I request you to take a copy of that. And I want to go to the second uh, uh, incident where, you know, uh, Elijah has to face the river Jordan. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 8 says, and Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided tighter and tighter so that they too went over on dry land. So now the prophet Elijah is facing the river Jordan in his life. And do you know what he did? He had a mantle and he wrapped his mantle and when he hit the waters of Jordan with his mantle that was wrapped, that's when it made dry and made a way for him to pass the Jordan. And I wanted to compare this mantle in the Old Testament which Elijah used as a prayer. The reason I wanted to compare the mantle with prayer is, and there specifically the Word of God says, Elijah wrapped the mantle. You know, he wrapped the mantle, which means when you wrap something, you don't see what is inside of it. And do you know, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, that how we should pray. He told, but though when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. So Jesus is talking about the secret prayer life. It is good to pray on Zoom. It is good to pray on WhatsApp. It's good to pray as a group. It's, it is good to pray in the church. But it is very important to pray individually, personally. A mantle that was wrapped. A prayer life. In a private place. So when you are facing the river of Jordan. Use the word of God. Have the word of God. Carry the word of God. And the second thing you have to do is. You must have a personal prayer life. 
And I always think in this way, Mark, when he writes in chapter 135, he told Jesus used to rise up early in the morning, even when it is dark, and he used to pray. But when Luke writes it, in chapter 6, verses 12, here the Luke saying that Jesus prayed all the night, which means Jesus prayed always, as Jesus himself told us to pray always. And uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians that we have to pray without ceasing. And the question is, if the Son of God, Jesus, the God himself, need a prayer life, day and night, always, how much more we should have prayer life. So that really motivated me. And by the grace of God, every day, I spend about three to four hours in prayer. The scriptures that I memorized, I recite them, I meditate them, I use the scripture to worship the Lord, I use the scripture to pray. And it is my desire to spend eight hours a day in prayer and meditation. Because all the people who does the jobs, who work outside, they work about eight hours a day. As a servant of God, I wanted to spend eight hours in the presence of the Lord. So the second thing is, use your personal prayer life. When you are being afflicted, when you see you are going through problems, when you see you are being suffered, you must have a personal prayer life. And the third thing, uh, third incident I wanted to share, Elisha, or Elisha, he had to face the river Jordan. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 14, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and tither, and Elisha went over. So it is a very similar incident which we read earlier. And now here, Elisha is also facing the river Jordan. And we all face river Jordan in our lives. No matter how seniority you have no matter how from how long you're coming to the church we all face river jordan in our lives so here elisha now he is using the mantle that he received from elijah so i wanted to compare this mantle which uh, Eli elisha received from elijah with the holy spirit because when Jesus ascended to heaven, that's when he sent the Holy Spirit upon us. So the third thing, you know, when we face River Jordan in our spiritual lives, we must have the Holy Spirit. We must have the experience of being led by the Spirit of God. And one of the greatest things that the Spirit of the Lord or the Holy Spirit does is, we can see in Luke chapter 2, verse 25 and 28 says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. 28 verse. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said. So here we see a man by name Simeon and he is in old age. But because he has the Holy Spirit, even before his death, he was praising God. So when we have the Holy Spirit, no matter what you are going through in your life, you will continue to praise God. Devil always wants us not to praise God, not to worship God. He stops us praising God. He stops us worshiping God. But when we have the Holy Spirit, we always worship the Lord. And when we worship the Lord, we see things change in Acts 16, 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. When they were singing and praising God, God 
open the doors of the prison. So when you are going through family problems, when you are going through financial problems, when you are going through you know, personal problems, when you are being suffered, when you are being afflicted, know that you must have the Spirit of God. Because if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you know, you will continue to praise God no matter what you are going through. When you praise God, when you sing praises to Him, when you worship the Lord, that's when God opens the doors. And we see this, in these three incidents, the river Jordan was departed and there was a dry land made for them to pass that Jordan River. But I wanted to remind you, two people has to dip in the river Jordan. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. We know the Bible is talking about Naaman, the captain of the house of the king of Syria. You know, he had to face the river Jordan. But God's purpose here is entirely different. So God's plan here is not to make a way in the river Jordan to cross the river Jordan. But here God wants this uh, Naaman to be dipped in the river Jordan. The reason is he was suffering with leprosy. And God wants to heal him. God wants to restore his problems. So God is using a different theory or a different formula. So he told him that he has to be, you know, dipped in the river Jordan. And we all know when he did that seven times, you know, he was healed from his leprosy. And sometimes God allows troubles in our lives. It does not mean when we are facing troubles or challenges or suffering in our lives that God is not with us. God is with us in every situation. But He always wants us to get close to Him. There are some times in our spiritual lives we need healing to our soul. There are some times in our lives in some areas where God wants us to get right with Him. So God allows troubles, God allows afflictions in our lives so that we can learn in those situations and so that we can be healed and so that we can get well with God. And Hebrews 5.8 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Talking about Jesus, Paul says Jesus suffered. The reason that he suffered was God allowed this suffering that he may learn obedience. So many times we are not obedient to God as in the story that I shared with you. We wanted to try different ways. We wanted to try our own ways. But God wants us to teach us obedience. So the fourth thing when the Jordan River is in front of you is to examine ourselves if we are obedient to God or not. Are we obeying His word? God gave His word so that we can know what God's heart is. So we can obey. So even King David said in Psalm 1971, It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy stages. When David examined all the incidents, all the sufferings, all the troubles, all the afflictions that he had gone through, he came to an understanding that God allowed them with a purpose that he can learn the Word of God. That he can obey His Word. So I want you to encourage you, when you are going through difficult situations, when you are going through troubles, when you are being suffered, when you are being afflicted, this is a time for you. Yes, sometimes God wants you to dip in the problems. 
so that He can heal you, restore you, helps you to obey you. But the question is, are we obeying God? Are we learning from what God is teaching us? And uh, the fifth one is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He had to face the Jordan River. Mark 1.9 says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. So here, you know, the God Himself, the Son of God, Jesus, the living Word, which became flesh when He touched the waters of Jordan, it was not made a dry land. In the Old Testament, we saw in three occasions when men of God touched the, the waters of Jordan, it was departed. But when God Himself, the Son of God, Jesus, the living Word, when He touched the water of Jordan, it was not departed. Because God has a different purpose. And the purpose is that Jesus has to be baptized by John the Baptist. And do you know what happened when uh, Jesus was baptized in that river of Jordan? Uh, Matthew chapter 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus, when He was baptized, went up straight away out of water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto Him. And He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dough and lightning upon him. And a low a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And here the Jordan River did not depart it, but heaven departed and made a way for the Holy Spirit to come upon Jesus Christ. So when you obey the word of God, God will open the heaven and he will pour his blessings. God is ready to bless us. God is ready to take us out from the situations that which we don't want to face. But the only thing is God is expecting us to have His Word of God in our lives. Have a personal prayer life. Have the Holy Spirit obey His Word and be a witness to Christ. Jesus now, when he was baptized in the river Jordan, he is witnessing God the Father in heaven. The Holy Spirit came and witnessed that. So are we witnessing Christ in our afflictions, in our troubles, in our, in our persecution, in our sufferings? Are we obeying God's word? Are we carrying God's word? Are we having personal life of prayer? Are we having the Holy Spirit? I pray that God will help us to obey His word and be a witness to Him, no matter what we're going through. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank You for this wonderful opportunity, Lord. Thank You for Your word. Thank You for Your spirit, Lord. May we carry Your word in our hearts to go through River Jordan. May we have a personal prayer life to go through River Jordan. May we have your Holy Spirit, Lord, to go through River Jordan. And also, Lord, use whatever you want to use to make us to obey you. No matter where we are, how we are, what we are facing in our lives, Lord, help us to be a witness to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray.